I discussed it with her and I basically booked it in thinking that we're not going to need it anyway because he'll be here. So that was a week ago and now the induction is tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the video. Um, today is Monday the 15th of June and I'm and it's about uh, 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. and I'm just recording this the day before I have my birth induction tomorrow. So I just wanted to, I don't know, I just feel like having a little bit of a talk and a just a bit of a yeah just l letting it all out there's not much purpose for this video apart from just processing and kind of documenting what's been happening so that is what i'm doing um so currently well tomorrow i will be 39 weeks and three days um with my first pregnancy I went into labor naturally at 39 weeks and five days or and a half so probably same-ish time actually um so let me just tell you it's been a crazy week and I'll tell you what's been happening I might have to skip back a little bit um so with Jed's birth my first um when so that was a natural drug free delivery it ended up having to be vacuumed because he was a type of posterior where his head wasn't aligned down with the birth canal his head his chin was pointing up which means his head was uh like getting stuck or having trouble passing through my pelvic bone area which meant a prolonged second stage of labor and then vacuum delivery when i got to the hospital with jed i was already nine centimeters dilated i did all, like most of the work at home and didn't have an epidural because i was told that he would be here soon unfortunately that wasn't the case because he was kind of stuck um and they had to do, like manually turn him which was very very painful um but like it was a traumatic experience but in hindsight now i'm really glad that i had the experience of a drug-free delivery i can say that in hindsight but not at the time um so going into this pregnancy or going towards this pregnancy um so you, you would know if you've seen my like recent pregnancy updates that I've been reading up about preparate, preparing for natural childbirth. Not because I'm closed to the idea of having an ep ep epidural, but just because I wanted to be more prepared with how to handle natural labor um, and just empowered with like positive birth stories and you know even just in case an epidural didn't work because sometimes they don't work i just wanted to be prepared and i was feeling empowered and wanting to use the bath and just um go through the process naturally and then if i found that i needed an epidural yeah i was prepared to do that but um i know some people will question why wouldn't you just have it i have been asked that but i'm someone who reads a lot and has a lot of information going into things so i know about the risks that epidural i know about the benefits certainly but i do know about the risks that it carries for both mum and baby and ease of delivery and stuff like that so it's something that i haven't just gone into saying I'm definitely going to have an epidural um, but I'm getting a little bit off track what I was just trying to say is that leading up to this birth I was hoping to have uh, go into labor spontaneously um, about a week and a half or maybe two weeks ago I had a checkup with my doctor and they were discussing um, 
when we should book in induction because I have gestational diabetes and when that's the case they like to induce you I think 38 or 39 weeks because of risk of baby being um, on the bigger side according to their scans baby is a little bit on the bigger side but they did also say that about Jed and he wasn't so I was a little bit well I was said to them I don't want to be induced I'm happy to discuss it for the you know to book for like the due date and whatever but I'd like to see if I can go into labor naturally because I wanted to avoid the things that induction you know like the not so nice aspects of induction and one doctor was fine with that then fast forward to last week I had another doctor's visit and okay what happened last Monday um, through the night or early hours of the morning I had been having more contractions I'd been having Braxton Hicks for quite a few weeks but these were sort of more pattern there was more of a pattern um, and they continued throughout the morning and I felt like I had like basically a rock melon in my bum I felt like his head was right there and we decided to call my parents down they live 45 minutes away because I felt like I didn't know how fast things were going to happen and that I might need to go to the hospital anyway they came down and basically things completely fizzled out it was not a relaxing home environment not because of my parents but just because there was suddenly lots of people here and my son was excited and you know my parents were interacting with Jed it wasn't quiet um, I just couldn't it just wasn't like a relaxing environment to like be in labor in and I don't know if labor was happening and then it fizzled away or what but it just was not a relaxing day anyway they went home the next morning and things had fizzled out and then the next day I just happened to have a doctor's appointment and um, at that appointment she did a stretch and sweep and said that I was already two to three centimeters dilated so I thought okay fantastic um, when that happened with Jed and when I had the stretch, stretch and sweep he arrived two days later that said it was I did have that with him a whole week later on in the process um, but anyway uh, both doctor and myself were thinking he would probably be here by now um, and this particular doctor brought up the subject of induction and I said to her I wasn't keen but I said but because of my experience the day before with having everybody in the house while I was essentially having contractions even though they were mild um, I was more open to the idea of discussing induction because I thought that it could be one way to get around having other people in the house while I was in labor I thought it could be good to just be able to go to the hospital and not have to deal with that at home so I discussed it with her and I basically booked it in thinking that we're not going to need it anyway because he'll be here so that was a week ago and now the induction is tomorrow all this week I've been having like you know contraction pains on and off but no nothing regular but enough to make me think is it happening and I've had like other little signs as well towards you know we're moving towards that stage um, but nothing obviously has happened um, and it's been uh, and so essentially my preparation to this point has been preparing for hoping for a natural delivery like a calmer natural delivery than my first experience and I've been kind of not uh, I've been not looking forward to birthing certainly not I've been realistic about the pain realistic about possibly needing an epidural but 
I have been looking, I have been not looking forward to, but just, I guess, happy for the opportunity to have a positive, a more positive birth experience. But midway through this week, that plan sort of flipped. So it sort of flipped from me reading birth stories and looking up positive natural birth stories on YouTube to me having to look up positive induction stories on YouTube um, and reading more about induction and trying to prepare myself that way and just asking questions to mother's group friends and stuff because even though I've known a bit about induction like I didn't know enough to be like prepared for it and I've been going back and forth about whether to do it. The reason that this has been so extra complicated this week is because um, some of you might know if you actually know me or if you've seen of one video I mentioned it in um, my mum was really sick earlier this year and like really sick she, she's like past that bit but she's had she's had like breathing difficulties and basically this has all come to a head in the last couple of weeks and her doctors have said she needs to have surgery urgently and her surgery is tomorrow the date of my induction and um i it's just worked out in a weird way um she wanted to push it back but they said no they said it's urgent she has to have it and they are our carers for jed well they were going to be our carers for jed um because obviously we moved so we don't have a lot of family up here when i found out that mum's last week after i booked the induction that mum's surgery could be today i was toying with the idea of moving the induction um but the thing is um it's just complicated so i don't want to bore you with the details but basically one of my lovely lovely beautiful friends is going to be looking after Jed tomorrow and um, obviously my parents can't um, my dad might be able to take over in the night because mum's surgery involves at least one night in hospital so he's on standby for, t for tomorrow night if we should still not be uh, baby's not arrived even as recent as to like a couple of hours ago I, I've I've just been going back and forth every day questioning whether I want to go ahead with being induced because um, uh, like there there are just risk factors with induction and it's something that like I feel like I could get quite upset about now and that I feel like I might have to deal with later with Jed's birth like I mentioned I did find it quite traumatic and it's something that I was dealing with for quite a while after his arrival um, and I was hoping not to be in that space this time and I'm nervous about how it's going to play out. Baby boy has one more night to make a natural appearance before he is going to be rudely awakened and ejected um so yeah it's kind of a weird position to be in um i um on the one hand i kind of just want to want it to be over and done excuse me over and done with now on the other hand there is a part of me there is still a part of me that just wants to say no i'm not having an induction if I go into natural labour, Lindsay will just have to drop me to the hospital and we'll have to see who's available for care last minute and 
and deal with it from there um but yes um i just feel like the anxiety of that of waiting could be stressful and and he like he might not being stressed isn't a good way to f go into labor like your body needs that oxytocin that feel good stuff and i don't think that's a very good way to go into labor like waiting and also with gestational diabetes they wouldn't want me to go past 40 weeks anyway so i might end up having to do it a different day um so it just feels like logistically the easier decision but just not the one that i thought i would need to do but i'm gonna go in tomorrow into tomorrow optimistically and just um gosh i'm trying not to think about it too much it's a weird feeling like knowing that it's tomorrow that i'll be going through that labor um and i dare say that whilst i wanted to have a positive natural labor story i dare say that i will be coming back with an epidural story because i just feel like, like i know what it's like and just under the circumstances i i feel like that's how it might go um so anyway that's just bringing you up to speed apologies if this is such a rambly self-indulgent video not really helpful for anyone and i'm actually all into the positive pregnancy stories like i said i've been searching out the positive stories on youtube and i don't want to share negative stories because i feel like it's not helpful so yeah i mean obviously there's going to be some yuckiness involved so you have to be realistic but yeah um whatever so anyway moving right along Lindsay is just has just taken jed to bunnings to get a little latch that we need for our door so that jed doesn't bust in on baby boy when he is napping in here um we still don't have a name for baby <laughs> we have two names that we like and we still don't have one and he's due tomorrow i think it's just gonna be a have to be a case of meeting him and maybe we will um maybe that will help us maybe it won't and whatever we'll figure it out uh we found in other like unrelated but whatever other news if you followed along with me you'll know that a few months ago we were told our landlord was selling this house and we were actually advised today that he's taken it off the market so that is both good and bad um it's good in the sense that we know that uh we're not going to be like suddenly told we have to move in a month with a newborn and not having um the freedom to choose somewhere where we want to live so that's it's overall very good um on the other hand i was completely open to like in a month's time um sort of scoping out what was available um because it's it can be hard to find a good place that ticks all the boxes but on the whole i think it's good um it would just be frustrating if something good slipped through our fingers but on the whole that's good and it also means that it forces us to just stay here and settle into new life as a family of four rather than uprooting jed and having that chaos so that's that update for you 
Um, I am not going to be posting this video until later. Um, I have had a few videos going up which I pre-recorded and have just scheduled to go out. So this one will come out later and then after this one I'll, I guess, give an update on how, um, how tomorrow goes and we'll see if I label it positive <laughs> story or just story. Thank you for listening to this self-indulgent ramble. Hopefully the next time you see me, my face will be a little less wide. Um, I haven't actually given you a pregnancy like update, so I might do that just quickly now. Um, look, overall, this pregnancy has been easier than the last one. Um, I have found that in walking around, I've been a lot more comfortable at this stage of pregnancy than I was with Jed. I found walking really hard last time. I had a lot of pelvic pain and like, um, I forget the name of it, but it's the thing where you feel like you've been like punched down there and really painful to walk. So mo mobility wise, this pregnancy has been easier than the last one. Um, different. <laughs> I've been feeling like nauseous this week, which I didn't get with Jed. I've had Braxton Hicks for weeks, which I didn't with Jed. With Jed, I went into labor at midnight and had him by 1 p.m. the next day. Whereas with this one, it's just been very stop, start, stop, start, contra contraction pains. Um, so yeah, diff different, definitely different pregnancy experiences. Um, I have been pregnant for basically a year because I, yeah, I have been pregnant for basically a year because of the miscarriage and then falling pregnant straight away. Uh, it's been a year, so I'm quite uh, looking forward to not being pregnant. It's very uncomfortable, you know, and I put on 25 kilos with Jed and I've put on the exact same amount with this baby and that, so pretty uncomfortable. I imagine like if you're um, someone who puts on the recommended like 12 kilos or whatever that it's not as uncomfortable. Um, this is just what my body does. So, but yeah, all in all, it's been not too bad. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening to this ramble. And um, I guess in the next video, I will give you some info about how things go tomorrow. Talk soon. Bye.